Hi there, movie lovers. Our weekly appointment with our in-depth analysis of the lives and works of your favourite stars in the cinema industry is back. Monday is the day of the week in which we take a look at the path walked by our favourite idols. We study how they achieve their successful careers, we take a peek behind the scenes, and we explore what their future projects have in store for us. Here on Film Is Now, we actually post fresh new content every day. The latest trailers, mashups, editorials, reviews, and everything you want to know about the world of movies. If you don't want to be the last to catch up on all the latest updates, make sure to subscribe and to tap the notification bell to be kept posted across all your devices. The person we'll be speaking about today is one of Hollywood's most recognisable faces, but who has come a long, long way. Sit back, as you're in for a lot of information, because today's subject is Leonardo DiCaprio. Let's start everything off by saying that Leonardo DiCaprio is a very lucky man. He is actually even lucky to be alive. Literally, he has been through so much in his life. From skydiving with broken parachutes to plane crash landings and escapes from sharks, he has done it all. As a matter of fact, he was even lucky to be born in the first place. His mother Irmalin barely survived her own childhood after being born in a German air raid shelter during World War II. At a very young age, she then contracted infections upon infections that had her hospitalized in life-threatening conditions for many years. Her life later improved when her family moved to the United States, where she also met George DiCaprio. Leo's future father. George was a rebellious spirit. He was a close friend of famous musicians such as the members of Velvet Underground and used to work in the world of comics, but he would also hang around in drug-washed environments. For this and many other reasons, George and Irmalin's relationship had started to fall to pieces, but they were soon expecting baby Leonardo. Before breaking up for good, they took one last trip together to Florence. While visiting the museums and looking at a painting, the baby in Irmalin's belly started kicking wildly, to the point that the parents could not help but name him Leonardo after the famous painter Leonardo da Vinci. But if the couple had been struggling, after Leo's birth, they completely split up. The two were everything less than wealthy, and DiCaprio's childhood was spent in the worst neighbourhoods of LA, avoiding drug addicts on the street and witnessing all sorts of degrading situations. He grew up mostly with his mother, who would send him over to stay with his German grandparents every summer, allowing young Leo to speak fluent German. And while his father loved him, he didn't show it in the best ways, as he would take little Leo to environments which weren't exactly suitable, such as drug-ridden meetups, and he even exposed him to people having sex, leading him to deal with complicated feelings when growing up. The neighbourhoods in which Leo grew up were populated by mainly Hispanic communities, meaning he was one of the rare white kids attending his school. This led to bullying on behalf of his peers who would hit him and even put him in the dumpsters. But regardless of this, Leo always had a cheerful attitude, earning him the title of school jokester, and even becoming a master at imitations of his schoolmates. His attitude was fun, but could get problematic at times, and although he had already been introduced to the world of TV as a preschooler, he had to be removed from set because of his terribly disruptive behaviour. His first acting career only came after his stepbrother Adam Farrer was cast in a serial commercial and he followed suit. As many famous actors in their first jobs, he appeared in commercials for Kraft, Applejacks, Mattel Games and many more. His proper acting career began only in 1990, as he starred regularly in different TV shows before he debuted with his first film character in Critters 3, a role he later described as your average, no-depth, standard kid with blonde hair. But he then stepped up to more award-winning projects such as the Poison Ivy film series, which even won at the prestigious Sundance Film Festival. But his first serious acting role was in 1992 in This Boy's Life. The cast actually included a huge film star Robert De Niro, who was so impressed by DiCaprio's talent that he spoke highly of him to his colleagues in the industry, including mentioning him to stellar director Martin Scorsese. As a matter of fact, years later Scorsese and DiCaprio became close partners on the big screen, repeatedly working together. This Boy's Life was even future Spider-Man man star Tobey Maguire's first role, and the two became very close friends. DiCaprio's talent was soon being acknowledged as surprisingly good, and the following year he exceeded all expectations when he starred as Johnny Depp's brother in What's Eating Gilbert Grape. His wonderful role as a mentally disabled child led him to being one of the youngest nominees for an Oscar and a Golden Globe ever, and his success skyrocketed in a matter of months. Actors all over the industry were beginning to spot his talent, to the point of paying his salary themselves in order to include him in productions, just like Sharon Stone did two years later for The Quick and the Dead. In 1995, he then replaced late actor River Phoenix in Total Eclipse, as Phoenix had died during pre-production. And then he took part in The Basketball Diaries, portraying a heroin addict high school basketball player. It was during these years that DiCaprio's looks began to make the papers, and began selling a lot. This was then emphasised by his romantic success in Baz Luhrmann's Romeo and Juliet, and then he was consecrated as the hero of all teenage posters by performing in the epic movie Titanic, in which he portrayed a penniless traveller on board the To Sink Transatlantic. 
During the trip, he entertains a romantic relationship with a wealthy woman on board. She was played by Kate Winslet, with whom he bonded in a very strong friendship. The two have been very, very close ever since, with many suspecting that their relationship borderlines on a romantic story. But DiCaprio's love interests were already focusing on different people, as he entertained many relationships with various superstars and models, and then finally with Bunchen, who is what we could describe as his one true love. If all the other girls came and went, Giselle was the one for Leo and they dated for years. But his busy lifestyle and his habit of hanging out with other girls eventually got to Giselle, and when Leo gave her a ring, maybe asking for something more, she refused it and decided to break up with him. Leo's heart was broken, he later admitted she would have been the only person he would have seen himself creating a family with, and for years after, all his following girlfriends tended to have very similar looks to Giselle. Although DiCaprio's role in Titanic was ultimately the one that skyrocketed him to international stardom, the actor has often stated that his character was not something he was exactly proud of, and he definitely did not want to recognise himself in the Leo mania, even hoping it would never happen again. His private life was being intruded by hordes of fans, including one episode in which he was chased through the Louvre by a group of admirers. Because of all of this, he decided to keep a low profile for the next few years, only appearing in smaller productions such as The Beach, which is now known as a cult movie, but which at the time was very low-key, even earning DiCaprio a Razzie Award for Worst Actor. Although with Leo it's hard to define what low-key is, even the hidden exotic location which is the focal point of the film was known only to locals before filming, but which since has become an overrun tourist location which has filled many Instagram pages and vlogging channels to the point they had to be closed for a while due to the amount of trash that was piling up. Although the beach was a small shooting, it was actually the set of one of the actor's many near-death experiences, as the set was caught in a violent thunderstorm with the boat with all the crew being shipwrecked, all the props and shooting materials falling into the water and Neo ending up in the churning waters and barely surviving, although he did managed to help many people to get back to safety. This was also the time of DiCaprio's life in which he began to publicly express his concerns for the environment and his strong animal-loving heart, something which has stuck with him for all his life, becoming a strict vegetarian and using any public platform to share his causes. He founded the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation and has donated large portions of his revenue to charities with contributions of up to $3 million at a time. He has even decked his house to be fully powered by solar panels, he drives hybrid cars and he allegedly refuses to take showers every day to avoid consuming too much water. Following his period lying low in the cinema industry after the Titanic mania, Leonardo DiCaprio made a huge reappearance on the silver screen with a film by Martin Scorsese, the director who had heard so much about him since his younger years. The movie was Gangs of New York, a period film with a mammoth budget of $103 million and a cast which included world star Daniel Day-Lewis. The same year, he worked for another giant director, Steven Spielberg, and an incredible cast including Tom Hanks in Catch Me If You Can, this true story of a con artist who made millions of dollars by the age of 16. As he continued down the path of success, a part of DiCaprio's past came back haunting him. The actors always suffered of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which made him often arrive late on sets as he'd have to walk in a specific manner, avoiding chewing gum stains on the ground and having to repeatedly walk through doorways. They accepted the role of real-life aviation entrepreneur Howard Hughes in The Aviator, although his character suffered the same issue. The role included depicting many tics, triggering DiCaprio's OCD, which he had managed to keep under control for many years. Years. While having to deal with his own issues, he had to learn how to portray those of Howard Hughes, so he also worked with psychologists and other people affected by the same problem. But he made the world proud of his efforts as the film, again directed by Matthew Scorsese, was showered in praise, earning Leo Golden Globe for Best Actor and even earning him an Oscar nomination. After other roles such as his African character in Blood Diamond, his frequent collaboration with Martin Scorsese continued with the cult hit The Departed, famous for having one of the biggest stellar casts of all time, with Jack Nicholson, Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg, Alec Baldwin, Vera Farmiga, and anybody you can think of from the Hollywood Hills. The story depicted a double infiltration, a Boston mobster hiding in the police force, and a police officer sneaking into the mafia, with the outcome in being a twist-ridden plot. The film has been universally recognised as one of the best of all time, and it helped establish DiCaprio as one of the best actors on the scene. After years of intense filmmaking, DiCaprio's number of roles greatly decreased, and after The Departed, he only accepted very carefully selected roles, such as Revolutionary Road, alongside his best friend, and Titanic co-star Kate Winslet. He even decided to dedicate this time of his life to his environmental causes by creating the documentary The Eleventh Hour, which includes contributions from over 50 scientists, activists, politicians, journalists, and covers all issues environment related, global warming, deforestation, ocean destruction, animal extinction, and it offers a series of solutions to these problems. DiCaprio also enjoys spending a lot of his free time in direct contact with the nature, traveling to exotic locations, meeting the local animals, and on one of these trips, his passion for nature 
Fisher nearly killed him. He was swimming in the ocean with Fight Club and American History X actor Edwin Norton when they encountered a huge great white shark and had to desperately swim back to safety. This was not the only time DiCaprio endured a near-death encounter as around the time he was visiting Russia when the plane he was on caught fire and it had to do a last second emergency landing. Needless to say, Leo was unscathed, just like the time he went skydiving and his parachute failed to open. Only at the last moment he managed to open the emergency chute which allowed him to survive. While his private life was full of dangers, including stalkers smashing glass bottles into his face, he kept up with his filmmaking career by starring in psychological thriller Shutter Island, again by Martin Scorsese, and which covers the mysterious disappearance of a patient from a psychiatric institution, which leads to a larger police investigation on behalf of DiCaprio, who begins to uncover much more than expected. The same year, he starred in Inception, a film by a director everybody in the industry would kill to work for, Christopher Nolan. Inception follows a team of spies led by DiCaprio, who are experts in espionage on a psychological level, so extracting ideas from a subject during sleep when the mind is more vulnerable. He later performed as a vicious slave and plantation owner in Django Unchained, in which he delivered such an evil role and got so involved in his monstrous character that in one rage-fueled scene he accidentally cut his hand and then smeared his blood all over co-star Kerry Washington's face. The role was very demanded for DiCaprio, who struggled with all the racial slurs he had to scream on set, and he eventually had to speak about the issue with fellow actor Samuel L. Jackson, who explained how hard it was for African Americans and how with these slurs it was just another Tuesday for them. Another selected film by the actor was the remake of a classic, The Great Gatsby, alongside his childhood friend Tobey Maguire. And then again, with Scorsese behind the camera, he chose to do The Wolf of Wall Street, in which he portrayed the real-life story of a drug addict broker, a role which allowed the world to discover Margot Robbie, who played his beautiful on-screen wife. DiCaprio had never taken any drugs, and for this film he actually needed coaching on how to look high, and together with co-star Jonah Hill, they watched YouTube videos such as The World's Drunkest Man to deliver believable acts. Although DiCaprio's life has always been squeaky clean, his stepbrother Adam Farah, the one that had introduced him to the world of cinema in the first place, got caught up in trouble with the law, and nobody knows much about him except for some unconfirmed news that he is currently on the run from the police. Although most of DiCaprio's films were showered in praise, none of these roles earned DiCaprio an Oscar, something which has become an internet meme. But all of this ended with a revenant, an aesthetically stunning piece by Alejandro Iñárritu, in which Leo's character was trying to survive near-death conditions in the snowy woods of the 1800s. After years of waiting for this special moment, DiCaprio chose to dedicate his Oscar speech to his environmental causes, asking everybody to join him in saving the world. Now after a long wait, DiCaprio is back on the big screen, alongside Brad Pitt, Al Pacino, Dakota Fanning, Emil Hirsch, Margot Robbie in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the most awaited film of the year and which is being praised as one of Tarantino's best movies. There is a lot of rumour surrounding DiCaprio's future works, as he is set to star in the film adaptation of the novel Killers of the Flower Moon, directed by, you guessed it, Martin Scorsese. He is also supposed to depict NYC police officer and organised crime fighter Joe Pritchardino in an adaptation of The Black Hand. Then there are rumours of him depicting Leonardo da Vinci, the painter that gave him his name, and many other unconfirmed reports. But whatever he'll be starring in will surely be a huge success. But for now, we want to know what your favourite film with DiCaprio is, so make sure to leave a comment down below letting us know. To keep up with all our other videos, make sure to subscribe and to tap the notification bell to be the first to know all the latest news. And if you want to share your passion for cinema, don't forget to check out our movie lovers clothing paradise, with merchandise available right below this video. Get your t-shirt now and show your love for films to the world.